Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So previously we went ahead and checked out Maxwell versus Pascal. If you haven't seen that, you can go ahead and check this video out here, our GPC part one test. Today we're going to be checking out Kepler versus Maxwell and seeing what sort of architectural gains there are to be had there. But before we get to that, this video is brought to you in part by our patrons on Patreon. Thank you to all of you guys for your support. You've really helped us out. And if you're interested in becoming a patron for as little as just $1 a month, you can really help us get tech on hands and we can do more in-depth videos like this for you guys. So for this particular video, we're going to be looking at the GTX 650 Ti in comparison to the GTX 950. Now let's go ahead and check out the specs on those. The reason why we're comparing those two are both of them have 768 shader cores. Now they do have a difference in architecture. That's the reason why the 650 Ti actually has more TMUs at 64 versus 48 on the 950, but lower ROPs at 24 versus 32 on the GTX 950. Once again, this is just due to the changes Nvidia made in their architecture for it to be a little bit more efficient. And that's what we're trying to test here. GPU clock on both of them were set to 1215 MHz and 6.5 GHz on the memory. This leads to 104 GB per second on memory bandwidth and 1.86 teraflops between the two of them. Now these GPUs are virtually identical as far as speed goes. They both have 2 GB of GDDR5 and we clock them at the same speeds. So we're running the same tests where we're not pushing past the two gigabyte barrier so this way we don't have any sort of memory limitations there because then the memory compression would actually become a factor which is technically part of the architecture but that's not something that we want to test we want to go ahead and have an even fight here and see what the difference in frame rates would be so let's go ahead and check out those benchmarks So unlike in our previous GPC video where we saw Maxwell and Pascal ended up being virtually identical, in this particular case, Kepler is vastly, vastly inferior to the Maxwell architecture. We're looking at a 53% uplift in minimum frame rate and a 37% increase in the average overall frame rate. Now, the largest advantage is in DirectX 12 and Vulkan games, where we see a 64% increase in the minimum frame rate and a 42% increase in the overall average. So that means in newer games, Maxwell is much, much faster than the older Kepler architecture, which makes a lot of sense. 
Kepler was designed for DirectX 11. DirectX 12 wasn't even a pipe dream at that particular point when that was developed. So once again, this does make a lot of sense, but moving forward, this means that the performance difference between the two should actually increase. So for any of you out there that were thinking about maybe picking up a GTX 780 or 780 Ti, maybe somebody selling them cheap, you should probably reconsider this if you're looking to play newer, more modern AAA titles. This is not going to last you very long. The architecture itself is just too old at this point. Maxwell came out in 2014, so that even that's a little bit long in the tooth, but that architecture is the most efficient GPU architecture out there right now. Pascal's a little bit more efficient with some tweaks to the architecture. It can clock higher and it uses a lot less power, but overall it performs identically. Now to me, this information is really nice to have. We have definitive evidence and numbers to go along with that on the performance difference between the Kepler and Maxwell architectures. Now, while these benchmarks are largely academic, obviously Maxwell and Pascal are better than Kepler. I mean, that just makes sense. But we now have definitive evidence. We have numbers that we can put to that as far as the performance gains. Overall, if you kind of average it out, you're looking at a ballpark 45 to 50% increase generation to generation. Now imagine if AMD or Intel could pull that off next year with their next architecture. That is absolutely astonishing. Those gains are fantastic. Now, this is the reason why NVIDIA is just kind of using that architecture and running with it. They're just optimizing it because it is so good and so efficient. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, where are all the AMD GPC tests? Well, to be honest with you, the market is still a little high due to the mining out there. So, for example, I'm not going to be picking up an R9 380X for $200. Once prices come down a little bit and they're a little bit more reasonable, I will go ahead and get those on hand and we will go ahead and test those out. So be sure to keep an eye out on those videos because they will be coming. Now, I will be comparing AMD to NVIDIA here shortly using the R7 360. That also has 768 FP32 shader cores. And now, granted, everybody's going to be like, well, they can't compare one to one. Well, yes, they can. I mean, the shader cores do the exact same math. AMD's architecture is what we're looking at. We're not looking at the performance of the card one to one. What we're trying to look at is the per core, per teraflop performance and see how they compare relatively. Now, we know that the AMD GPUs generally have a higher shader core count because they're not as efficient, but just like in this particular test, it'd be nice to have a number to put with that level of efficiency. Well, alrighty guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. That really helps us out. I find this really interesting and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there would too, so would your friends. Uh, now, obviously, like I said, this is academic, but it is a nice basis for discussion. You know, try to keep it friendly out there. I know that's not the case with the internet most of the times, but this is just kind of an interesting point of uh, information that just it hasn't been out there. So once again, thank you to all of our patrons for helping make this video possible. And once again, if you're interested in helping out, go ahead and join us on Patreon and I will catch you guys in the next video.